Hey all, and welcome back to Room 66. Before we get into today's story, I would just like to let all of you know that we've started a Patreon. So if you enjoy our content and you would like to see exclusive content not found on any other platform, I recommend clicking the link in the description and becoming a member. But anyway, today's story is that of a man who had quite the unusual to say the least, experience with a rather large bunny rabbit. So sit back, relax, and enjoy your stay in room 66. I've been debating telling this story, but it's been weighing on my mind since it happened. Even attempting to tell the story has been difficult, as it has been removed before as if some unseen forces don't want the story to be told, but I feel it's important to share. When I was younger, I had an amazing middle school teacher, Mr. Wilmot. He was the kind of teacher who seemed to just get what it was like to be a kid. Some people, when they grow up, forget what it's like, you know, but not him. He was a great guy. I'm 30 years old now, a single guy, still a little lost. I recently was able to purchase a home and it turns out that the house belonged to Mr. Wilmont's ex-wife. I thought that was pretty cool. Last I heard, he was teaching out in another state. I felt genuinely like he was still helping me out. I asked about him, but his ex-wife knew about as much as I did. I guess they lost touch. That was until I found this journal in the basement. I can't say for sure if he wrote it. To be honest, I'm hoping he really didn't, because it's the strangest thing I've ever read. But I wanted to share it because it's so weird. I have transcribed the first pages in the journal, and it's really messed me up. The journal begins here. My grandfather used to say that there was nothing more important in the world than family, a real man put his family first no matter what. They should always be your top priority, which is a nice thought, right? That's a life philosophy I try to follow myself, but sometimes you can do everything right and still fail to protect them. This is the story of the day I learned that lesson. The day my family was murdered. The day I met the bunny man. On a normal day, once I was finished work, my thoughts would be normally occupied by what I would be having for dinner that night. My beautiful wife, Samantha, would always make something awesome. Our son, Max, would be playing video games in his room, but always pausing to come greet me. My daughter, Lucy, relaxing and enjoying the sunlight outside, but always willing to jump up to get me something if I asked. I counted myself lucky. I had a really great family. You're probably wondering why I'm explaining all this, but it's important you know how lucky I felt and how much I loved them, which is why I was so sad that my marriage would be ending soon. Samantha and I had been having troubles, and despite how hard I worked, it seemed to only put my marriage on life support, a temporary fix. I knew the truth. It was the beginning of the end. Would I ever be happy again? Would I be able to find someone as awesome as Samantha again? This is what I was thinking about when I made my way home. I was only half paying attention when I opened the front door, but when I saw there, brought me back to full attention. Standing in my kitchen was a six foot tall, white furred, bow tied wearing rabbit mascot. At least, I thought it was a mascot. It was pure white, giant ears, and naked, except for a pink bow tie. I guess rabbits are always naked, but you get the idea. 
After a few minutes of brief silence, just sizing each other up, he spoke. Hello, James. Why don't you have a seat? It's hard to describe the voice it had, but if you ever saw the movie Dead Silence with Billy the Puppet, that's the closest I can compare it to. The rabbit's voice was somehow kind and menacing at the same time, calming yet threatening. He gestured towards the single empty chair at my kitchen table. It was then that I noticed that there were five decorative eggs sitting on the table. One red, one yellow, one blue, one black, and one green. One other lesson my grandfather imparted to me is to never give bullies an inch. If you let them get away with it, they will never leave you alone. I decided I needed to be assertive and make it clear I wasn't going to put up with any shit today. I'm sure it seems crazy to you, but I was raised to be strong. I realized from the fact that he knew my name and had been watching me. How much did he know about me? How long had he been studying me? Look, I began calmly. Whatever it is you're looking for, we can work something out. I have money. Shit, take my car. I have friends on the police force. Just tell me what you want and I'm sure I can get it for you. The rabbit was completely unfazed. Sorry, James. You've been chosen. We're going to play a game today. And if you're very lucky... No one will get hurt. Are you a lucky man, James? His words echoed in my head. I've always considered myself very lucky. I figured today we would put that to the test. Who chose me? And what is it going to take for you to go away? The rabbit turned and seemed to take notice of my refusal to sit. In reply, the rabbit took out a long, sharp knife from the knife block. I backed up and raised my hands defensively. However, I wasn't expecting what happened next. With lightning speed, the rabbit spun the knife blade around facing itself and then the knife into his own chest. I jumped from the table, more due to surprise than anything. The rabbit barely registered the blow. Dark red blood began pouring out. I thought I had a vague idea of what to expect walking into this, but I must admit now, I briefly felt completely lost. Just as quickly as it began to pour, the blood suddenly stopped, leaving only horrifying bright red stains on the rabbit. Except for the stains, it was as if nothing had happened. I'm sure my raised eyebrows spoke volumes. I did not expect that. Taking my silence as permission to continue, I wanted to stop any thoughts of escape before you began. You see, I've done this before, lots of times in fact. Some people think they can fight or escape the game. You can't. You can't kill me. You can't escape. And if you do, I'll hop along and follow. I'll follow you to the end of the earth. I've done it before. I never stop. Until you're ready, until you realize that your only choice is to play. An awkward silence followed. The rabbit seemed content to let me mule this over. After taking a moment to weigh my options and think, I came to a decision. I needed to think more. Well, more specifically. I needed to buy time to think of a plan. What happens now, I said. The rabbit's expression never changed, but his big eyes seemed to gleam. Now the fun begins. First, pick an egg. I slowly picked up a red egg, my favorite color, hoping I made the right choice. Now open it, the rabbit continued. I split the egg open with both hands, ripping through the wrapper and the chocolate underneath. At first I thought it was a simple chocolate egg, but inside there was a piece of paper. I unfolded it and saw that it had the number two written on it. I had a feeling that I made a bad call. What does this mean? The rabbit's eyes seemed to sparkle. They looked almost real, lifelike. Just one of many things about this situation that was intriguing to me. Wait here, he said. He went upstairs, heavy rabbit feet thumping up the stairs. I sat at the table, my mind reeling. I knew I probably had to act fast, but I wanted to play this out. 
I had a feeling I knew what might be going on, but I wanted to see for sure. Heavy rabbit feet thumping back down. He was carrying a brown paper bag, heavily stained at the bottom and clearly leaking. This was what I expected. A rancid smell filled the air. He placed the bag on the table. I wanted to be wrong, but evidence was piling up that I wasn't. The rabbit stared at me. Here's your lucky rabbit's feet. I opened the bag. Inside were the decapitated left feet of my son Max and daughter Lucy. My eyes widened with a rage that I rarely ever felt. Staring at the rabbit, struggling from words. You, you did this to them? The rabbit stared back. You certainly don't deserve them. It said, you made it too easy. Do you have any idea who I am? I said. Does it really matter? Said the rabbit. Now, unless you want me to do the same with your wife, you're going to do what I say. Now come upstairs. We have a lot more games to play. The rabbit man said. I laughed, the rage burning hotter inside me. They were mine, I said, the rage finally boiling over, reaching under the table. I grabbed a machete that I had hidden in a compartment under the table in case of an emergency. We lived in a bad neighborhood. I moved towards the rabbit man. He was expecting me to be scared, shocked, but I was angry. They were my family, mine. And the only thing I wanted to do now was make him pay. I moved much faster than he expected and drove the machete straight through the rabbit's stomach. The rabbit moved backward, shocked. I heard him grunt in pain. Not the fake ass rabbit voice, a real human grunt. I reached the machete out and kicked out with my foot, knocking the rabbit into the ground. He scrambled onto the side living room, no doubt wanting to regroup. I took a minute to grab the knife the rabbit had dropped, and I followed, a trail of blood leading through my living room and out the back door. I considered briefly that I should follow, or instead go check on my family. Thinking it over briefly, I made the decision. At this point, the journal skips ahead. Two weeks later after the incident, two police detectives interviewed me and filled me in. Apparently, they had been tracking this monster for a while. Some kind of screwed up serial killer in a rabbit suit who liked to mutilate people and make families play sick games, choosing what parts to cut off of what family members. They said I'd been lucky. The others in my house weren't. My wife, my son, my daughter, they were all dead. They found only their decapitated heads sitting on each of our beds. The monster's M.O., My poor kids, my wife, tortured and slaughtered like animals. They said if I hadn't acted so fast that I would have ended up just like them. I asked the detectives if they were going to catch him. Unfortunately, they had no leads, but they said they were close. They didn't realize I saw the look of doubt that passed between them. I told the detectives if I thought of anything else that might help the case, I'd be in touch. And to give my friend Ryan the chief of police, my regards. But of course, that was a lie. There were many things I wouldn't report to the police. Like how the body of the rabbit man is now buried deep, deep in my backyard, along with the blood packs he had hidden in his suit. I must admit it was brilliant, pretending to be some supernatural creature to scare victims into doing what they wanted. But he was just a man, A very evil man, but a man just the same. I enjoyed killing him. He took away my family. I made it slow. I cut off fingers and limbs piece by piece. He eventually dropped the fake slasher act and even started begging for his life. It was really very pathetic. I was disappointed. I thought for once I had finally found a fellow monster. Instead, it was just another coward trying to be an icon. Another thing I wouldn't report, the headless bodies of my wife and kids were also buried next to him. Being childhood friends with the chief of police has its advantages. They didn't search my house that carefully. They were confused why the rabbit man 
would leave the heads of three strangers in my house. Usually, it was a family member. They figured he must be changing his M.O. They trusted my story, and my act. They certainly didn't search as hard as the rabbit man did. They never found the secret room where I had the woman and two kids chained up while I was away. The ones I had kidnapped and came to see as my family. The rabbit had. I will give credit where credit is due. He was smart enough to find my hidden room behind the bedroom bookcase. I wonder what he thought when he found the three of them all chained up. I suppose he figured it'd make the game even easier. He most likely was arrogant enough to think that he would still come out on top. He just didn't know what he was dealing with. He didn't realize I was the true monster. It's a shame. I never got to show any of my families their surprise. The shiny new fire axe I had purchased. I was finally going to set them free from the physical and mental torture that they were under this last year. It was time to send them to the great beyond and find a new family. But before that, I wanted to play some games of my own. I was denied that. He took them. They were mine. I decided to keep the rabbit suit. According to my friend at the police station, they have a DNA sample of the rabbit killer. They won't be matching it anytime soon, not with him buried deep underground. But it did teach me more about him. Not only was he stupid, but he was also an amateur. He made mistakes, but when I wear the rabbit suit and go out and find a new family, I promise you I won't be so careless. It's almost that time. I waited a long time. I just wanted to give things enough time to blow over. Be smart about it. I think it's going to be fun. The next people I take, I'll try to make last a long time. And to protect them better. Hide them better. Find my own little rabbit hole. After all, I have to protect what's mine. I have to take care of them. Nothing is more important than family. The journal ends here. Certain details of the story don't match the house for now. For example, my house is all one level, and I haven't been able to find any secret rooms. So if the story occurred, it took place somewhere else. Did my teacher write it? And if he didn't, who did? I have no idea. No idea. But one thing sticks out clear in my mind. The last year before he transferred to a new school, he wore a lucky rabbit's foot on his belt. Ever since I read the journal, I've been asking myself, was that the day I met the bunny man? Well, that's the end of it. If you enjoyed our story here today, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell so that you get notified every single time we post. I really hope you enjoyed your stay tonight in room 66.